else soften your pinky. These public school children in Northeast Oklahoma are experiencing a day they will likely remember for the rest of their lives. Nice and soft, gentle thumb bump. They are being taught by Roberta Guspari. Now put your thumb on, I call, the, these are the hugging fingers, the middle two. Guspari is an internationally renowned music teacher whose real life story inspired the Academy Award nominated film, Music of the Heart. Actress Meryl Streep played the role of Guspari, who achieved international attention by saving the music program she taught in Harlem, New York, from being eliminated due to education budget cuts. Guspari knows from personal experience that music can keep children engaged in learning if they are given the opportunity to be inspired. They don't have something like the arts to go to school for, even if it's one or two days a week. When I was a kid, I just couldn't wait to go to school when there was orchestra, you know, but that, that allowed me to hang in there and do mathematics and do English literature and things that, you know, were more of a struggle for me. I preferred music. As these children learn the Gaspari method, you can see their intense concentration. What does the music education do for children? Well, I mean, it does everything. It, in a nutshell, it teaches the kids how to think, how to solve problems, how to be disciplined in their efforts to learn anything. The Tulsa Symphony paid for Guspari and her son Nick Zavaris, a cello player with the Shanghai Quartet, to teach two days of workshops. The symphony and other organizations across the state are trying to pick up the slack for public schools, which are reducing music and art education. Tulsa Public Schools has something where the sixth graders are allowed to choose PE, art, or music and um, we are in schools where they allow us to have strings as part of their music and those kids have chosen strings. But it seems every school district in the state does it differently. Patrick Riley is an artist in residence for the Oklahoma Arts Council. He travels the state teaching art to young people. I see other schools which are only offering art in a limited amount of time to students and uh, then the rest of the time the students do not receive art. Riley joined people representing 40 organizations at the state capitol this week to try and educate lawmakers on the importance of arts education in public schools. I've seen some schools, they build new football stadiums, but the kids can't take art in their school system. I'm sorry, but the kids in that school that are visually and musically dominant in their brain system, they're going to be lost. Ken Busby is the executive director for the Arts and Humanities Council of Tulsa. The arts should be seen as a core subject. The arts are just as important as math and history and English and science and the arts. And because we know from all the research that students who are exposed to the arts do better in school, stay in school longer, do better in science class and math class and all of these things. Barry Schmelzenbach is the director of admissions for the Harding Fine Arts Academy, a charter school sponsored by the Oklahoma City School District. Studies show that students do better when there is an emotional connection to the material. He says Harding integrates the arts throughout its curriculum. One of the things that we hear with that arts integration throughout that curriculum over and over again, we hear that from parents my child is now excited about going to school in the morning. And I'm no longer asking them, what did you do at school today? They're coming home and they're telling me. And that's what arts integrated into school does. Members of the organizations represented at the Capitol emphasize the importance of the Oklahoma Arts Council, a state agency dedicated to promoting arts education across the state. And our money goes right back into the communities, over 80% goes back into direct grants through to schools and organizations across the state. Kim Baker is the executive director of the Arts Council. Baker says her agency has lost a million dollars in state funding since 2010. She hopes their funding won't be cut again this year. Last year I believe that we were one of the few organizations that took a 9% cut when most of them took around a 4%. The Bartelmus Music Conservatory in Tulsa received some of its money from the Oklahoma Arts Council. 
Here, gifted students like Jerry Nye receive scholarships worth five to $6,000 a year to study with accomplished teachers and professional musicians. Jerry says after beginning violin in the sixth grade, his grades improved. Uh, take math, for example, you have to have lots of homework and practice to do well on your tests. So um, music helped me realize that. Eight-year-old Kayla Chow is also on scholarship. A piano virtuoso who has been playing since age four, Kayla was selected to perform at the Merklin Concert Hall in New York City with other gifted children across the United States. Kayla also composes and writes songs. Kayla's mother believes music has developed her child's superior intellect. Her teacher said that she, she never, you know, have seen such a talented girl in her whole career, teaching career. So she's, she's really talented. She's good at writing and reading and mathematics. You know, it's like an emotional part of who every child is. You know, music is in all of us. And it's just like, it's, it's rich, it's spiritual, and it, it touches on what we need children to be touched by, which is, uh, you know, something inside them, you know, that respects, and it's not even respect, but loves learning, you know, and this is a way, a venue into that, into their hearts and souls.